Father, we ask that you breathe upon your word tonight. As we share the scriptures, we ask that you teach us, sweet spirit of God. Let nobody return home the same way they came. In every heart tonight, stretch your hands and touch. Give us a flesh, a heart of flesh, a heart that is willing to obey, to yield to you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, pray. People said, Amen. All right, please have your seat in God's presence. Can you jam those hands together and celebrate the Lord tonight? Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. So, team, you are going to stay on that court for me. Hmm? I'm of my mind. I'm going to teach tonight because I wasn't able to teach on Sunday. I'm if you in church on Sunday. Let me see your hands. Church on Sunday. The Spirit of God moved through our midst. And one of the things to do, I'm talking tonight on sensitivity to the Spirit. You can sit. I'll bring you what I need, but I need that guy on stage. Same chord. Hmm? One of the things you have to learn about sensitivity to the Spirit of God is that in atmospheres like that, you are hearing God speak to you. You see that? Now, if you have learned how to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you hear him speak promises to you. He will tell you, one of the things he will tell you is that I am with you. You hear that over and over. He will tell you, I'm with you. He says, oh child, oh Jacob, oh Jacob, oh little warm Jacob, I'm with you. He says, I will never leave nor forsake you. So if you've learned how to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you bring out your journal in the midst of that atmosphere and begin to write down those things that he says to you. Those things can never come from the lips of the devil. You have to make sure because the encounter, encounters that we have with God do not last forever. But we can, from those encounters, receive something that can last for the rest of our lives. Are you following my point? So, one of the things you must learn as a child of God is how to be sensitive with your walk with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we can be too carnal and too distracted that we miss out on what the Holy Spirit is doing. Sometimes, because we can be, you know, very, very distracted, something, everything is happening everywhere, and then you miss out. But the Holy Spirit is speaking. If you learn how to, how to be sensitive, then you would also learn discernment, how to know when something is not natural, because you have moved with the Holy Spirit. It will come with a soft and silent nudge in your spirit to trigger you to take note of an event. It can teach you of an event or let you see an event, an event that would have naturally happened that you'd have looked away from. But suddenly you'll be looking at it with a different way, you know, different eyes, like, hi, this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. The Holy Spirit is a speaking spirit. The Holy Spirit is a speaking spirit. There's no such thing. And that is why one of the things that you noticed is that when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to speak in tongues. You see that? One of the first fruits of the infilling of the Spirit is speaking in other tongues. So the Holy Spirit is a speaking Spirit. It takes a lot from us to be sensitive to hear Him when He speaks. The more you practice that sensitivity, the better you get at it. The more you obey and practice obedience to the words of the Holy Spirit, the better you get at it. The more you practice disobedience to the words of the Holy Spirit, the better you get at it. The more you're able to snub his voice and look away from what he's saying, the better you get at snubbing it. But the more you yield to him, you see, that sensitivity is measured in how soon or how often or how, you know, how much you yield to the nudges of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Sometimes he nudges you to pray. Sometimes it's not even prayer. 
like I was sharing with the, with the, with the workers on Sunday, a guy, you know, the in church, Akure, also in church, Akure, the pastor was sharing a testimony with me, how they needed, they needed money to, to buy a generator, and there was no money. And there was a particular guy in church who needed, who was believing God, that God would put money, and that he wanted to, you know, also give towards the generator, but he didn't have money. So he did a work for a client, and the work for that client, you know, was going to cost like 400000 As he wanted to send the invoice of 400000 the Holy Spirit said, no, don't send invoice of 400000 Send Eh? Send 10 million. 400,000 worth of work, send 10 million. It looked like, ah, how? But the Holy Spirit said, do it. Now, you have to be very, very sensitive in your work. You have to develop your human spirit to be able to catch the slightest nudge of the Holy Spirit. If you stay too much around carnal and sensual things, your human spirit will be numb. You see? To the nudges, you know, people can become numb. For instance, one of the things you know about leprous people is that their skin is numb. If you pinch it, if you put fire, they won't feel it because they have become numb. A, a person's spirit can become leprous so much that even if the Holy Ghost will prick the person, he doesn't sense anything. So he said 10 million. And you know, he sent the 10 million, and the client paid 10 million. And the Holy Spirit said, It's not all your money, 7.2 <laughs> is for generator. And I mean, 7.2, that is, he has 2.8. He was supposed to collect 400,000 for because you can never do business with God and run at a loss. You can never do business with God and run, you can never do business with God and run at a loss. Sometimes it's a nudging in your heart. Some of us have lost money because we didn't listen to the Holy Spirit. When they brought that Ponzi scheme to you, The Holy Spirit said, not. But the person was very persuasive. He said, he just got, he just cashed out now. And people are getting money everywhere. And your greed overruled the voice of the Holy Spirit. And you put in your money and they said, it has crashed. But you knew, if you're going to be sincere, you knew something was hesitating here in your heart, not in your head, somewhere here. Sometimes your head says, go ahead. Sometimes there's a voice here saying, no, don't go ahead. Sometimes it's a relationship. The guy fits in all, ticks all the boxes, does everything perfectly. But there's somewhere here that says, no, not him. No, not her. But because you look at it, I mean, tall dark demon <laughs> cute to a fault and I used to tell you the story of that my daughter in the Lord who had a guy the guy is child of the pastor of the branch of that church tall dark with pink lips one of the next ways to know people that are not reasonable <laughs> or who that may not go very far <laughs> okay let me not go there let me just let me just let me just continue <laughs> yes you see pickling bam you saw pickling bam with him and you think and you you committed your future you know what i'm saying yes yes he, he kept pickling he wants his lips to be pink So, she had come meet me, you know, he told me about it, but the, when she told me the name of the guy, you see, something here, something here. Something here, said no. Something here. Now, what I'm not saying, I'm not trying to overrule the fact that there are possibilities that people have made mistakes, but I'm talking like someone who has experienced, my, my wife is my very first girlfriend in my life. I never had any girlfriend before my wife. I don't have any ex. I don't have any ex any ex anywhere my wife is my first and my only girlfriend because you don't have to kiss all the frogs before you meet the prince the bible says lean not not on your own understanding in all your ways i can then it will direct i mean if you know if you allow the holy ghost to direct you it's going to lead to a good place all right so please just follow me so i said just something here i said 
No, that's not him. He said, how can you say that? You haven't even seen him. How can you just talk like that? I said, no. You know, I just, I'm just not comfortable. I just think that's not him. But of course, they overwhelmed me with all the reasons why it should be him and all that. And the Bible says, there's a way that seems right to a man. But the end, the reason why that way seems right is because the way looks right. If every way that leads to destruction, they wrote, welcome to destruction in front of you. Nobody will pass there. Are you following my point? People that ended up dist being destroyed, they, 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 wouldn't, they wouldn't inform them from the beginning. So they said, that, I just said, no, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this guy. See, but you have not seen him yet. The Bible says, for we know no man after the flesh. You see, we are spirit beings. I can meet someone today and I just in the car. I should have no business talking to this guy. There are people you meet, I mean, they are looking so amazing, but you just in the car. For me, in my heart, I have no business you know, relating with this person. So they said, no, I said, that guy must not come to my house. I don't want to, I don't want to come. But they said, like, like, he must come. So they brought him. They even made semu for him and uh, vegetable and everything. Kind of the guy ate. So they said, no, pastor, you can't just judge like that. You have to see him. You have to see him first before you talk. So the day he came, I was in my living room. That my daughter, the Lord, came and called me. He said, pastor, is here. You know, so it doesn't look as if I'm just being stubborn. And, because I'm not the one I want to marry. I said, do you want to marry her? So she should not get us back. She has seen us now, you're not going to accept. Did you want to marry her? I said, okay, okay, let me come and see the guy. So I came and see the guy. Oh my God. Oh my God. Well built, tall, sweet looking demon, I'm telling you. With pink lips. And then he was talking about all sorts of conferences. I mean, he went to my bookshop, bookshelf, and then he saw my books and was talking about this Kenneth Copeland book and that Kenneth Egan book. And he was talking about this, you know, Mike Mudok and all that. I just said, no, no, no. In the midst of all that, yeah, just here. Just here, he says, no, no. He says, okay, why? What else? Did he say anything wrong? I said, no. Did he do anything wrong? No. But I said, just in here. Something is not right. You see, when you start walking with the Holy Spirit and you feel that nod, it's like washing your feet with your socks on. Something is not right. You get my point? Imagine it, you are washing your legs with your socks on. Something doesn't fit here. So I prayed, I said, Lord, let me see why this is happening. Please let me know. Because I don't know this guy, I've never met him before. The Lord, would, the Lord answered my prayers. You see that? This is my time. The Lord followed him to the market. He wanted to change his phone, change his SIM card. So somehow, the Lord inspired her. She picked up the phone, you know, and before he came back, saw how he had been sleeping with different church girls. Some were even sending nudes to him. He saw this other person's nude, that other person nude, you know. And on the Wednesday that the GO of their church was coming to have a you know, a great meeting here in Abuja. The guy said he wasn't going to be around. He was with that girl, sleeping with that girl. And his father was a pastor in that denomination. And, you know, she was just crying. She was just crying. She was just crying. And then she came home and told me, and I began to dance. And I danced, and I danced, and I danced. And I said, yes, I told you. I didn't know. I wasn't there. But somewhere here, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. This is not. The Holy Spirit is a speaker. You have to develop your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. It will save you a lot of disasters in life. You wouldn't even invest your emotions in places that have no returns. You wouldn't invest your time. You don't have that time. They were talking about a financial business person who said he has never lost money before. I mean, how do you find a businessman who has never lost money before? He never lost money before. He said, I never lost a dime before in business. How did you do it? He said, because before I go into any business, I spend time before the Holy Spirit. And I ask him, Lord, should I go ahead? I don't allow the, you know, the, the, the necessary thing, the what is reasonable. David came and saw that his, his, his country, his people had been taking the most reasonable thing to do is to do what? Is to begin to run. In the midst of that, he began to ask the Lord. In the midst of that crisis, should I go? Should I pursue? Will I overtake? Can I recover all? He asked about my father-in-law's story in the midst of all that i asked the lord what do i do he said go to guagalada in the midst of that crisis that's that voice the sensitivity if i had not developed my sensitivity to the voice of the spirit there's no way i would have heard him in that kind of crisis 
This is why you can hear God's voice in the midst of a storm is that you have learned how to hear it in the midst of a calm. You have learned to understand him when he speaks to you in a calm situation. So much it has become loud to you enough to hear it over the noise of the waves of the water. This is so critical for us to learn. As we grow up, we're going to make decisions in life and those decisions must be such that are prompted by the Spirit of God. People can die. People can die. Paul was going to go and preach in Asia and the Holy Ghost says, don't go. Ah, you can say, why? I'm going to preach. Holy Spirit says, don't go to Asia. He could have been killed. This thing I'm teaching you tonight can save you your life. Save you your life. I was in secondary school when I began to work with the Holy Spirit. And when I came out of my house and I saw a boy coming, and the Holy Spirit says, follow him. Follow him. I said, no, Lord, I don't want to follow that guy. The Holy Spirit said, why? I said, he talks too much. You know, I talk too much. I don't like people that talk too much. <laughs> I said, no, I don't want to talk to him. The Holy Spirit says, no, follow him. I said, Lord, he talks too much. I don't want to follow him. So I took a shortcut, you know, and I was trying to cut him. But every shortcut I took, I, I kept saying it. And the Holy Spirit says, I said, follow him. So I had to walk from my house. Usually walk from my house to the bus stop to get a bus. So I, I, I just followed him. And as we followed him, I got to the bus stop. A vehicle came and parked in front of us. He was going to take us to Songo. My school was no jury. I was going to open the bus. This guy just smacked me from the back. Ah! Open your eyes. Can't you see the bus? And so did my eyes. Open. I saw that in that bus, there was an FT man who was driving the car. An old man at the back. Two FT men at the back. Sorry. Two FT men at the back. An old driver. The moment they saw him like this, they zoomed off. Their car didn't even have a number plate. The guy just, they would have, I know this, in those days, it's not kidnapped that they kidnap for ransom. In those days, when they kidnap, it's ripper. It, many, many years ago, in, 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 I mean, uh, in those days, they don't kidnap for ransom. They, if they kidnap in those days, it's ritual. They kidnap somebody. You see, once in a while, they kidnap people. They don't kidnap all the time. Once in a while, it's kidnap for ritual. It just zoomed off. And they, that's why I said you should follow him. I said, no wonder. The whole, this thing I'm teaching you tonight can save you a lot of pain if you would learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Why would you waste your life? Why would you waste your time? Why would you waste your energy? The Bible says, why waste your strength on what does not profit? When he's calling you to himself, someone that knows the future is working with you. How can you have the Holy Spirit and you're making mistakes? Someone that the Bible says knows the future, knows everything. He's been to the future, he's been to the past, he's been everywhere. He knows what way you shouldn't pass. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, Jesus Christ promised to send. John chapter 14 verse 16, the Bible says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, scripture says. Another comforter. I will pray to the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Give me that in Amplified Version. John chapter 14 verse 16, Amplified Version. John chapter 14, verse 16. What does it say? Do we have it on the screen? Amplified. And I'll ask the Father and I'll give you another helper because he causes him comforter. Now, I said in my note here that sensitivity to spirit is not about how clearly you hear him, but how quickly you respond when he speaks. That's sensitivity. You see, sometimes his voice is time-bound. All right, delayed obedience becomes disobedience. When he said to Philip in Acts chapter 9, he says, Arise, go down the way going to Gaza. And he went to the way going to Gaza and he saw that Ethiopian eunuch. You could imagine if Philip stayed back and slept a little bit more, maybe for two hours, and said, I will obey later. So when he obeys later and does exactly what God said he should do, he wouldn't find. Are you following my point? He wouldn't find that Ethiopian eunuch because the instructions of God can be time bound. So sensitivity to the Holy Spirit is measured in how quickly you respond when he speaks to you. He's speaking to you tonight. As you are seated here, he's speaking to you. If you just switch and, you know, this thing is very easy. I can teach you how to do it. As I'm speaking now, you are hearing a voice other than my voice. You are hearing a voice that looks like he's trying to interpret what I'm saying to you, you know, to your peculiar situation. And says, okay, you can see what he said now. That day, this thing 
that day and you are hearing that voice and I, I used to hear that voice you know as I as I hear God speak to me through the voices of people that minister to me it might be telling you right now that I want to use you I want to use you I want to use you for my glory I don't want you living your life like an ordinary person I didn't make this. I didn't make you for this I didn't create you just to live life you know, and when you are running around trying to just make ends meet, he's saying, look, I know this is important to you, but I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you and I can bring you right into it. You don't have to do this. You don't have to live your life like that. As I'm speaking to you, he's telling you things that you have to stop doing tonight. I say, look, you don't have any problem. The only issue here is just this one thing. If you can sort out this one thing, then we are cool. Jesus spoke to that young man. He says, one thing thou lackest. As I'm speaking to you, I can be reminding you of your days five years ago. I said, do you remember those days on campus when I would talk with you all day, all night? Do you remember? And he says, Lord, and you're saying, Lord, I remember. And he says, I miss those days. I miss those days. Even now, I want to speak to you. You have, get, you have gotten so overwhelmed with work that you, are not, you don't have time for me anymore. As I'm speaking, he may be talking to you right now. And as you begin to yield, and that's what I do, you see, when the Holy Ghost speaks on a topic and begins to talk to me about it, I will let him talk and talk and talk and talk, and I have something I want to tell him about, or questions, questions I want to ask him, and when I say that you have gotten so deep into that conversation, I bring up that issue, or I bring up, so the same voice that's been speaking to me will not be quiet, will not begin to talk on that issue, I will not hear the devil, I will not hear my mind, because I've already caught up myself in the spirit, it's been said, it's how quickly I respond. I respond. He can say, stand up. He can say, do this. He can say, write that, write that letter now. You have been applying for something in your mind. He can say, stand up now. Check your mail now. Check. You know the Holy Ghost can tell you to check your mail? The Holy Ghost can say, check your mail now. And you check and you say, yes, respond now. He can say, okay, no, no. Let me. He says, no, anything you want to say, even if you say, I will revert. Sin will revert soon or something. Respond now. Respond now. The Holy Ghost is putting an urge in your spirit. But if you learn how to procrastinate, how to put it up for later, how to say, no, I'll just do it later, maybe not now. If you keep learning, if you keep practicing how to, you know, make yourself ignore his voice, your spirit will soon become numb to his voice. Sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, it causes the love of God, the grace of God, sorry, the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Spirit. So the Spirit is a fellowshipping spirit. It's a fellowshipping spirit. Knowing that it lives within you is a fellowshipping spirit. The grace of God, the what, we can, what, we, what we recite, the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit is a fellowshipping spirit. So when it lives in you, you are conscious that you can't take him to wrong places. You, don't, you want to take him to see things he doesn't want to see. You don't want to take him to be with people he doesn't want to be with. The Holy Spirit is with you all the time and it's just a consciousness. It's just a consciousness. Are you following my point? It's just a consciousness. Now, you may think that you are struggling with some habits or you can't do without doing some things, but it's because you are not conscious of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, in your room, if you suddenly know that in your room there's a camera in your room, in your room, and it's recording everything you are doing. You know it won't be difficult to live very holy. <laughs> you know that. Now, you may think that, oh, pastor, I'm addicted to porn. I have to watch porn. You know that you cannot watch porn. Somehow, you just get some enablement. Are you following my point? Why? Because you know that somebody is watching. That's just all. A consciousness of someone Watch it. If whatever you do in your room, we're going to play it on the screen you know, on Sunday. I bet you you're going to spend your time praying in tongues. Father, we we'll give you all the praise. So that we can put that and say, wow, what a spiritual brother. If you are aware that whatever you are doing in your room today, we're going to play it on the screen. I bet you, you will not have any problem staying away from sin. It's an awareness, a consciousness that someone is watching the holy spirit is always with you the bible says he's been sent to be with us forever and so you don't want to grieve him by taking him to places he doesn't want to go there are places the holy spirit says, don't go don't go to that place don't go to that place don't go to that place don't see that person don't chat with that person don't start this conversation it's going to lead to you know something dirty it's going to lead to something awkward and then you start and then you don't know how to get out of it then even you don't like where it's going. 
but you, you just have an appetite. Your need for attention. You are enjoying the attention that this person is giving to you. You are enjoying it. And you guys may be flirting and flirting. And you know, I shouldn't be saying this. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be talking to this person like this. I shouldn't be. And you, are, and you continue and you continue. And before you know it, it gets so dirty and you're like you are regretting. And those will say, but why did you have to do that? You didn't have to go that way. You didn't have to go that way. You didn't have to go that way. Is a speaking spirit is a fellowshipping spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, we'll come back there still. Stay in John chapter 14. It says not to grieve the Holy Spirit. As you begin to spend time with him, you find out he has a will. I will come there. He has a thought. He has the things. The Holy Spirit thinks. The Holy Spirit has a will. He has a mind. To so spend time with him, that's the only way to know him. Somebody might say, ah, you are just forming it. You are, you are forming spirit coco. You are just forming. Because you are always very conscious of the kind of music you, know, you want to watch, the kind of movies. You know, I went to buy my hair last two weeks. And I don't know who took me. I don't know whether it was Obina that took me there. And I, took, I went to go and buy my hair. So my daughters were there. Three of them sat down. And they were showing something on TV. You know, I was not comfortable. And those people told me, tell them to go out. You see? So you, you, but you don't want to look like you are spirit coco. You see? You see that the Holy Spirit is giving an instruction, but you don't want people to think that your own is too much. But your own is too much. It's okay for your own to be too much. It's okay. Are you following my point? It's okay for your own to be... Don't, don't, you see, don't... A vehicle doesn't move on neutral. A, a vehicle doesn't drive, I beg your pardon, on neutral. For a vehicle to drive, you have to engage it. You have to engage a gear. Gear one, gear two. You have to, be, you have, to have an opinion. So when they sat there, and they were watching it. And I took my eyes off. And the oldest people says, no, you can't have your kids watching that. Even you can't be watching that. So I, I called Tino. I said, pick your sisters. You guys go and wait for me in the car. So they stood up, went to the car. So we're not driving on moving. I was driving us. I asked her, I said, why do you think I told you to enter the car? I said, I think it's because what they were showing on TV. So now, something already reinforces in our own mind. The Holy Spirit doesn't want me watching this. The day I'm not around, it will, the Holy Spirit will remind, ah, you have to see how the Holy Spirit works with children. He says, no, you shouldn't be doing that. I tell my kids when they do something wrong. I say, do you think the Holy Spirit, and I told to her one day, I say, go and talk to the Holy Spirit. Go and talk to God. So I'm not going to beat you. So she went and I came and peeped in her bedroom and she was crying. So Holy Spirit, I'm so sorry. I forgive me. I didn't beat her. So go and talk to God. You go and talk to God. This isn't that you did. This is right. Go and talk to God. And those people were still talking to her. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't. The Holy Spirit is a better father than you are. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have said that. She was we the kind of weeping. You know, if I beat my daughter, she doesn't cry. But she was crying before God. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. You, was talking to you shouldn't have done that. So they grow up with that consciousness of the Holy Spirit. You're not going to be with them forever. There'll be times they'll go for NYC. There'll be times they go for stuff. And some of us when we went to NYC, you know what the nonsense you were doing in your NYC. And this people was warning you. This was not how you were brought up. This was not how your parents raised you. It's a speaking spirit. It's a fellowshipping spirit. All right? The only way to know the Holy Spirit is to spend time with him. Please write that down. The only way to know the Holy Spirit is to spend time with Him. We have a generation that wants to do a lot for God, but not stay a lot with God. And our emphasis, most times, is in what to do for God than what or how to stay long with God. Please note that down. It's a very dangerous thing to be able to work for God when you don't work with Him. It's a very dangerous thing to have mastered your anointing mastered ministry in such a way that you don't need the Holy Spirit anymore. You can do without him what you have done with him. Emphasis should be to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Please pay attention to me very closely. In the midst of all this ministry stuff, all the things we are doing for God, that what should power it should be our time with God. Do you have a time with God? 
do you have a time alone with God? You know, most times I would, if I go for a retreat, I would go for a retreat alone with God. There's a place they call it alone with God here in Abuja. Far away in Kuje, in, in um, Kuali. Alone, I'm telling you, it's alone with God. Alone with God. Just there, worshipping. Only you. You know, you can get so bored if you have not learned how to be with God. So the only way to know the Holy Spirit is to spend time with Him. Unfortunately, our civilization does not give room for that. Our civilization puts a demand on you to be on your feet. And then in doing that, projects the possibility of having a microwave relationship, on-the-go relationship. However, to have quality time with God, you need quantity time with Him. God needs quantity time with God. Quality time is quantity time. It's not some five minutes popcorn whoosh, off you've gone. You will not be able to stay or develop strong spirit character like that. Sometimes I will tell myself I want to pray in the Holy Ghost for one hour. The moment you start, the devil will remind you everything everything you can be doing the moment you start why am i remembering now the spiritual exercise with the highest level of obstruction with the highest level of hindrance is the spiritual exercise with the highest level of power the spiritual exercise that you want to commence that you experience the highest level of resistance why the, am I suddenly remembering all the phone calls I'm supposed to make now that I've chosen to pray? Why am I remembering now? You know, Mike Mudok says I turned Satan to my reminder. So when I'm praying, my go down on my knees and I put the notepad beside me. So when I'm praying, he says, you should have called Jane as you call Jane. He says, I'm going to write down everything. Satan reminds me, I'm not going to stop praying. Write it on my knees, I'll write it, write it, write it. Call Jane, this, this thing. Send that mail. Do that. And when I'm done, I'll pick up that notes. Say, thank you, Satan. Because you suddenly, and yet there are things that you actually have forgotten that you suddenly remember. Sometimes you will start telling your friends to start calling you. Why did that your friend start calling you at that time? Because the enemy doesn't want you to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Spending time with the Holy Spirit is the only way to know Him. You cannot know the Holy Spirit. You see, intimate knowledge in scriptures is very close to sexual um, experiences. This is an Adam knew his wife. You cannot know God in public. You cannot know God like you possibly should if you always are around people, God said to Moses, he says, I will show you, say, come to the mountain. Only you come to the mountain. I'm going to show you my glory. I'm going to call you. Just, just come. And you see Jesus oftentimes will, you know, go all by himself. And it's, it's, it's a way, is a way of our fathers to set time apart only with God. Only with God. Only with God. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit begins to breathe, begins to speak begins to reveal things to you and when you get out of that place and you begin to do what it tells you to do you see your sensitivity is like signal those people that use glow you know they might not really understand what it means to have a fast you know a slow with pride they might not really understand what it means to be able to catch these things fast praise the lord <laughs> sorry sensitivity as you spend time have a time with the Holy Spirit have a time with the Holy Spirit sometimes it might even be awkward and I told when we were looking for a venue for SLC we couldn't get a venue we're at that spot now we're looking for land we're looking for land you know when I've gone up and down they will say come I am the owner of all lands I have a land for you in this city 
I know where it is. You know, Pastor Paul in nature said, after they have struggled to get a land they couldn't get, he struggled. They struggled. I mean, they've engaged all the realtors they could get. They couldn't get. He, out of anger, he just called one of them and anointed him. <laughs> and said, go get a land now. And the guy went in that anointing and got that land, that glory dome. See, you, you, you have gotten tired of human efforts. You are not. <laughs> you are empowered. <laughs> Engage the spirit. That's how they got that glory do. Land. By the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I've called it land. Yes. After the anointing. So as you spend time, you know him. The more you hear his voice, the more you are able to discern his voice. You see, if you hear his voice, it's like staying with someone and hearing the person speak, hearing the person speak. I hear my wife's voice. Sometimes when I, when I call my wife, my our younger sister, my pick it and try to form as if she's the one. I know my wife's voice. I know my wife's voice. I know my wife's voice. She speaks to my hand. I know my kids, my children's voice. I hear their voice all the time. So if you spend time with the Holy Spirit, because there are many voices in the world. There's a voice in your head. There's a voice in your mind. There's a voice of the news. There's a voice of the enemy. There's a voice of demons. And in all those voices, there's the voice of the Holy Spirit. It takes that discipline. It, is more disip it takes more discipline to spend time with God than to work for Him. It takes more discipline to spend time with God than to work for Him. So, develop it sensitivity to the holy spirit is strengthened by that spending time and responding when he speaks to you let's go back to Joshua 14 14 says another helper calls him a comforter a comforter yes John 14 in amplified version please John chapter 14 a comforter he says yes what else and advocates, you see, all these things are things that have to do with speaking. A comforter comforts by speaking. Abi speaks to you. An advocate speaks for you. An intercessor speaks for you. Counselor speaks for you. Strengthener speaks for you. So the standby there is like overall. We call it omnibus clauses in law. You just stay there, stand by. Overall is there. Is a standby. Is standing by you. How often that song says. Oh, how much heart we give ourselves because we don't pray. We run around, we run around, we run around because we don't talk to the Holy Spirit. It's the strategy of the enemy to keep you busy. We are in a busy world. At this age of our lives, we are busy. We think, you know, being able to be very busy and doing a lot of things is how you measure, you know, progress and we're there throwing our legs and throwing our hands, you know. And the Holy Spirit says, look, those that wait upon me, I would renew their strength. It's like waking up in the morning and you suddenly go to your living room. Just imagine this thing I'm saying. You woke up from your bed. For those of us that have one room and palo, you have your room from your... For those of us that just have one room, you wake up from your bed, you look at your door straight from your room to the outside world. You know, but... <laughs> well, for those of us that have maybe one other room, like a living room, imagine you come out, just telling you come out of your bedroom and then you suddenly saw Jesus on your couch. This is Jesus. You know him. When you see Jesus Christ, you know him. You have no problem recognizing him. You know him. This is Jesus. Kai. You say, sweet Jesus. Oh, how I love you. You came. Jesus. You came. Jesus, I love you so much. Thank you. I say, but please, I have to be on my way now. I'm rushing straight down because of traffic. I live in one man village, Maraba. Nyanya traffic can be very hectic at times. Please, I promise when I come back in the evening, please wait. Please don't go. When, you, when I come back in the evening, I have so many things I want to ask you. I have so many things I want to tell you. Please, Lord Jesus. And then you carry your bags and dash off, go to work, and you're there walking, walking. You came back late in the evening and you saw him again. Oh my, 
Jesus, you're here. You didn't go and his glory filled the entire room. And you are, oh my, I say, I just need to quickly get something to eat fast. Let me make something for myself. I will eat and then I still have so many things to tell you. And you dash off to the kitchen, get yourself, you start cooking beans. Tell you. And just as when you finish, you're there eating, you're eating and watching something just to while away time. And then after eating, you say, Oh Jesus, I'm so tired. Can we do this tomorrow morning? I promise you, I'm just gonna wake up one hour earlier. There's so many things I want to tell you. There's so many things I want to ask you, Lord Jesus. And you go to bed and sleep off. Someone says, never. I can never do that. Say, never. But that's what you do. That's what you do. That's exactly what you do every day. How many beautiful relationships could have had with him, but he's just there, waiting. Waiting on us. In the midst of that atmosphere on Sunday, did you see how many things he was telling you? Did you see how your mind was... How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's like they, it's like they unlocked a flood of revelation. Brrr, you are just hearing me. Oh, my daughter, my son, I am with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will lift you in my hands. I will stand by you. I will hold your hands. I will hold your feet. You were just hearing me talk. Brrr, because we generated an atmosphere. That's what happened. But you know you can have that in your house. You can have that atmosphere. I followed an anointing in my house several and I've gone to pray, for, fell down from chair. And as we go deeper and deeper, I could weep and weep and weep. I, I could weep when I'm praying. I like to pray when nobody sees me because I could really weep and weep. And I'm a cry baby. I'm telling you, 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 you don't want to see me. Sometimes when we're preparing to for overflow, I'm so embarrassed. When I, pray, I pray with the entire team. And I'm there crying in front of everyone. <laughs> I'm supposed to be strong, be strong, man, be strong. But I'm there weeping uncontrollably. I could weep for 30 minutes, stretch. You know, Toby Sachs, they were praying early morning, Timmy, but pray everybody's in the couch. I'm just weeping. I mean, real crying, crying and. <laughs> no prayer, just crying and crying. And when I'm done, I cry, but I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Ask them, yeah, 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 my witnesses. They are here, they are here, they can tell you. And I don't like doing that thing because I'm like, put yourself together, come on. You're in front of people. I can't. See my feel, same surge of the Spirit of God, you know, touching me, touching me, touching me, just touching me, touching me. I'm weeping. I'm, the way you were crying in church, you see you cry in church. The way you were crying, your eyes will fill with tears. That's how it is for me. In my house, all by myself, alone. I could watch that Duma Abba's video and pause it and cry, 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 cry. In my house. I don't have to come to church to have that feeling. I can have that feeling anywhere. Because the Holy Spirit is everywhere with me. Now, why is your eyes so dry when you are praying? Why is everywhere so bored? Why is there a body? Because you yourself have not developed that personal relationship and intimacy with him. And these people are very strong people. They, you know, by all means of strength, I'm emotional. I'm not emotional. That's my wife. I can separate issues easily in my head. I will not count for an emotional person. Easily. No sentiments. Very confrontational. I love confrontation. Nothing sweet more than to say, yes, they say I don't have stole it. Nothing, nothing, nothing excites me than to hear something. I'm saying, yes, let's go and meet the person. You know, I was, I was just in, a, I think I was just them in the office, you know, one time about one guy. I don't even tell you guys half of what I do. You know, when I spoke about the DSS guy that we went to go and carry, I went to go and carry. The whole place was people were shouting. I said, you don't even know what I did. If you know what I do, there was one particular guy that we caught that time. I told Manus, the guy has been sleeping with some quiet members, and I suddenly found out. Ah! In this place? No. So the guy now found out, it's as if I've found out. 
and we're going to deal with him on Sunday. So he now quickly message one of the pastors, you know, that he wants to submit to the pastor. He just feels drawn to that pastor. He wants to just be with the pastor. He wants the pastor to mentor him. You know, I was like, so the pastor now sent him. And the guy was in our choir, because I was in the choir. The pastor, the pastor now sent a message to the HOD of choir that Brassus also sent me a message, you know, in the night. I think I will take it off from here. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to, you know, be the one to handle him and all that. I feel like lie. So when, the, when we're not done, after, because we are planning that it's after service, we must get him. When the pastor now preached, the pastor was preaching, the pastor of the church, not that pastor, and made a call. This brother wanted to go out. I said, ah, you can't give your life to Christ now. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> ah, we, have not, we have to deal with you first. <laughs> so that when we are done, you can now take the remaining of your life. Ah, this you. you are not serious. So you are not born again. And you have been with us here. I say it's a lie. I say it's a lie. I say, leave him. I say it's a lie. I say he just wants to deceive us. He's not, he's not giving his life to Christ. We must finish him first. So I drag him to the back of the church. Those are kind of things. If I tell you half of what I did. Ah. So when it comes to emotions or sentiments, I'm not that kind of person. I'm totally dispassionate. The person that trained our admin staff, when we started SLC, that trained our admin office, the office of the staff is the only person that stood against me starting, starting SLC. He was the only person that stood and told the pastor that the pastor should not release me. And I said I was leaving. And we left and started SLC. And when it was time to come and train the staff, because he's very good at his job, I invited him to come and train the staff. Very dispassionate, no sentiments. I don't like you, but I work with you because you are good. I am, you get my point? Very detached in my mind. I used to say it that I'm. That's, that's how bad it is. That so, so far you can deliver, I don't care. I will not allow my personal feelings coming between the way of progress. I'll put my feelings aside like this. That's how. Some people cannot work with people they don't like. I can work with people I don't like. Because what, what is the value of my likeness? Uh, what is the monetary value of that my likeness? What does it do? So now I have somebody that can deliver well at this work can train my staff and give them the required tools that they need to get, you know, excellent and all that, I will not say I don't like him. So, the, one that, the ones that I like, what did I gain from them? You get my point now? That's what I think. So, if you see that kind of person, my, 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 my Mr. Anthony used to do the law of mental preference, we say, look, Philip, he says, people like you are very detached. Very, very detached. If I tell, I tell, if I tell you half of what I did, you'll be shocked. I, I'm not even pastoring. I have no emotions. My father died when I was very young. Very, very detached. So, it took God to break me to have me weeping like that in his presence. That's what I'm saying. No matter how dry your eyes, when you begin to move closely and he begins to talk to you, he begins to touch you, touch you, touch you, touch you, cry. And that's why you cry like that in church. You could hardly see all, everybody's eyes, except people that are not serious. Everybody's, every, every people were there, drawn. <laughs> please, pardon me, please. I'm sorry, I was just, I was just, that was, that was a joke. I didn't mean it. <laughs> that was, I, was just, I was just joking. That was a joke. You know, most people's eyes, most, let me use the word, most, most people's eyes, are, you know, I saw, I saw more more overwhelmed with that power of God's spirit. I saw Momo. I don't know if you saw Momo. This is a medical doctor. She went to university. <laughs> is that, maybe some people just think that all those people are just, they are easily, uh, they don't, they are just, they are bamboozled them. The medical doctor. Went to university. I saw Amana. I saw Amana was saying that better. Like that. I remember saw Amanam on Sunday when the power of God came and he broke down into tears. There. Somebody's sweating. I will never move. <laughs> Who has your time? So you think I came from my house to move, make you? I'm, I don't have your time. Are you following my point? I didn't come for you. Yeah, dear, never. Never, nothing can shake me. Most people are falling down. It's good. They don't know. If the Holy Ghost touches you, your heart will melt. Your heart will melt. 
you'll be open to his touch. He will touch you everywhere. It will bring out everything hidden. And you know, when he brings that, he brings that with so much love. You know, it doesn't hate you. He says, you have to stop talking to that guy. You have to stop talking to that guy. You have to stop now. You have to, you have to block. Don't preach to him. You have to block him. You have to block him now. Don't win his soul. I will send somebody else. You have to stop talking to him. You have to, don't try to make all things clear. Don't clear the air. Don't find closure. Don't, don't, don't do it nicely. Don't find a way to block him nicely. You have to block him now. What if I don't want, say, I just want to know what I did. You don't need to know what you did. You are blocked. That's what Spirit is telling you. And when he's doing that, he's doing it with so much love. You know it doesn't hate you. You know it doesn't condemn you. So the faster you respond, the easier it is for you to grow in your sensitivity with the Holy Spirit. The easier it is for you to grow in your sensitivity with the Holy Spirit. You can be grieved with the death of verse 20. He has a will. Romans chapter 8, verse 27. He has a mind, Romans 8.27. The Holy Spirit has a mind. Romans 8.27. King James, Romans chapter 8, verse 27. Somebody read for me, Romans 8.27. He has a mind. Look at that. And it has such the hearts of know that the mind of the Spirit, because it makes, it that does what? It that such the hearts, does what? Know what is the mind of the Spirit, because it makes intercessor for the saints according to the will of God. So he has a mind. The Holy Spirit thinks. Do you know the Holy Spirit can think even through you? And sometimes you are thinking, you know these are not your thoughts. These are the thoughts of the Spirit. He's pondering your heart. You know, it, didn't, it took me long before I found out that when my father was killing those animals, they were covenants that none of us was going to live long. I sat down like this and he brought everything to me because the Holy Spirit has a mind. He understands. You see that it takes the mind to understand, to comprehend. So the mind of the spirit comprehends and is able to interpret what he comprehends. So in those days, they would kill the animal. You know what they do with the animal? They kill the animal and they kill it halfway. They kill it halfway so that the animal can, can jump everywhere, splattering with pain, you know, spilling blood everywhere before he finally dies. And when he's doing all that, we will be chanting and singing and chanting and singing. And when he does that, we'll step on it and make some obeisance on it like this, on that dead animal. And I didn't know that that was a covenant of untimely death, that none of us were going to live, live long. And so that was the first thing God started dealing with when my father died and was revealing those things to me. The Holy Spirit has a mind. The Holy Spirit can think through you. It can begin to think the thoughts of God through you. You just find some thoughts about the kingdom. What can I do for the kingdom? Where can I go for the kingdom? What more can I do for the kingdom? You see somebody in church, you know the person has a need. The Holy Spirit is thinking through your mind. What can we do for this person? What can we do for this brother? What can we do for that sister? You find that it's because you are, you are not giving him room. That's why I say your spiritual life or your prayer life is boring. If you spend time, you see the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I don't know how it is, but I, when, I, when I first gave my life to Christ, and I, as I said, you must be prosperous. If you don't know the reason why you should be prosperous, please understand the reason that the prosperity will give you room to spend time with God the more. When I didn't have all the cares of life, when I didn't have to pay my rent, I was living in my father's house, I was born again, I didn't care about what food I'm going to eat, I noticed that the only can talk to me from morning till night. And he's talking. And he's talking. That story I said to you last week about the tree. Abby, you were in church. It was... One day he told me that thing. And I was just talking and talking. Then he told me about the vessel too. You know, a vessel. I would, do you have an empty bottle? We don't have, but we have this. I need an empty bottle. Do you have an empty bottle? Oh, something that can pass my Yeah, something that this work. So he told me one day too. In my study, he would just start talking to me. He would just start, when I'm reading the Bible, he would just start talking to me. I can just ask him, ah, what? What did this, why did this thing happen? Sometimes I want to check God, God, God Abba. You want to check Google? What am I here for? So, okay, Holy Spirit, you tell me. Say, I am the author of the Bible. Ask me. Ask me any question. Ask me any question. You think that there are things that are not are complicated in scriptures? You ask the Holy Spirit. He has answers for it. Everything. Why did you tell the man who was blind to go to the pool of Silo? 
Why can't you heal him here? How will he find the way to the pool of Siloam? I asked the Holy Spirit. The says, how did he find the way to that place from his house? If he's really serious about getting healed, he will look for the pool of Siloam. <laughs> because people can get so used about begging for harms that they're not ready for permanent solutions. The man who was at the beautiful gate, Bible says, was begging harms. He was coming to church every day. He wasn't coming to that place to get healed. He was coming to that place every day to beg for harms. And people can stay on the same spot for many years because if you ask them really, really, really in their mind, they don't want to get healed. I've met people that didn't want to get healed because if you get healed, then there will be no need for them to beg for harms. They like easy, they like easy handouts. So if you want to give them a permanent solution for their problems, they don't want it because permanent solution will mean that they have to engage their mind, they have to not start thinking, but they are more comfortable with collecting handouts from people. So because if this man gets healed now, then nobody will give him money again. Are you following my point? Say, so let him look for the pool of silence. He wants to be healed. We will know whether he's serious about getting healed. Why does your guys do that? I will ask him questions during my study. Why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why did you be, he will be so eager to explain to you if you find time with him. We are reading the book of Acts chapter 1. Every chapter. You sit down. You will see. When I was, when I was far younger than like this, it took Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. If I show you my old Bible, the book of Ephesians, I underlined everything in the book of Ephesians. I mean every verse. And I had writings on each margin of what the Holy Spirit was telling me as I was reading it. Now, he told me when I was told, he said, son, I want every of my child, or you know, my minister, my, my child in this, in this context, to be like a vessel. He said, look at this bottle. The first thing you notice about this bottle is that this bottle has an opening. So he asked me, he said, son, this opening is for things to be poured into it. He says, do you, do, can I find an opening in your life to pour myself into you? Ask me those questions. Can I find an opening in your life to pour myself? If I want to pour myself into your life, can I find an opening in your life? Or you are so closed in and wrapped up all by your own needs that you have no opening for me to pour out something for your generation. You can be so caught up with what you need, what you have to eat, that there's no gap for God to give you something that your generation needs. He says, do you have an opening? I said, okay. So he opens it. He says, do you have capacity? He says, the capacity you have determines how much you can take. He says, this thing can take maybe one liter. It's a one liter bottle. Some are two liters, maybe four liters, five liters bottle. So your capacity, do you have space? You see, capacity is space within. So people have space for a continent. Someone like Bishop Edeko now, one man, one life, built two universities in a country. Two universities, that's, that's capacity. In Canaan land, they have over 30,000 staff. Over 30,000 staff strength, that's capacity. That place has been built since 1999. Light has not gone out once. 1999 till now is 25 years. Abi? For 25 years, light has not gone out of that place once. That's capacity. So somebody has capacity for a village. Somebody has capacity for a state. Somebody has a capacity for a street. Somebody has a capacity for a house. Somebody has capacity only for themselves. So, so you see some water bottles can only feed you. I've seen water bottles. You know, my wife's water, my wife has a small water bottle that can take just maybe 50 ml or something just for you to quench your test. But there are some that are big like this can take you for the whole day. So, so your capacity also delivers how much you can take for a, for a time. So do you have space? Do you have space? Then he asks me again, he says, is your space so is such that if I pour in a substance into it, it keeps the substance in the format or in the way that that put it in. So if this bottle is dirty, now it will dirty what I put it in. It will corrupt it. Are you following my point? So it's your vessel dirty. So imagine me now, I'm studying and the Lord is speaking to me and I will wait. And all this is telling me, I'm not seeing it in the Bible. He's speaking to me from his word. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. If I now ask him, these things, can you show me? He will show me every single thing he told me from the Bible. He says, if any vessel project himself, it shall be a vessel of the glory. He will show me scriptures. Then it ends it with, do you, if you pour it and you close it and you put the bottle here, say, do I find the way I put you? See, that's always the Spirit asking. Do I find the way I put you? Because if I keep things, I, I, I don't, I don't really know where I, I, I'm very, I'm always losing things. And the solution to losing things is to remember where you put it. That's one. Two is to have a place for your things. Some of us don't have a place for your things. We don't have a place for our socks. Every day we are looking for our belts. Every day, you don't have a place for your key. Now, it's to have a place for your key and put your key in its place. It's another thing. 
Because you can say, I'm, I'm, from today, I'm hanging my key here. But then tomorrow, you have flung it under the kitchen cabinet. So, I know that I'm the only one who does not know how to have his people. So, you guys are just perfect. Everybody is just okay. You guys are not looking for anything. You're always, you know where your glasses is. You know where you're, But people like, I'm always looking. I'll say, Holy Spirit, I'm so sorry. I'm here again. Help me. I can't find where I put this thing. You understand what I'm saying? It's always like that. So he says, he says, do I, if I keep you here, when I need you, I know where to come and pick you from. He said, but my challenge is that most of my children never stay where I keep them. Never stay where I keep them. So he speaks to me like that. In clear terms. He doesn't speak to me in depths. I'm suspicious of people always speaking in depths and depths and mysteries and portals. I'm, I'm always suspicious of them. Because maybe they have a complicated Holy Spirit. But the Bible says it will teach me. A teacher teaches to understand. He will teach me all things. He uses the minutest. Look at how Jesus Christ teaches. He uses seeds to teach. He uses the, the seed to teach. He uses the, the things everyone can, is familiar with and teaches them with it. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will take out of what belongs to Jesus and reveal it to me. So he has a mind. In church, the Holy Spirit, I can bet it, except you are not listening to me. Except you are not listening to me. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. Right now. Because he will speak to you through my voice. He will remind you and emphasize and corroborate what I'm saying right now. Right now, you already know who you should stop talking to. Right now. As in, it's so clear. Because we are young people, we are always talking to the wrong people. Always talking to the wrong Always somehow. Because we are bored. Then you meet someone online and you're already talking to the person and before you know it, it's always, it's always happening. And the pastor does not know. Sometimes the pastor knows when the Holy, Holy Spirit reveals to him that this person is doing that. You know, I can't talk, I can't say everything that God tells me because there are some that are confidential. And this is not a gossip, it's not a telltale too. But sometimes when it's so that he has, he has tried and tried and tried and tried and you know, listen, they're not allowed them to catch you. He allows you to catch you out of mercy. Out of mercy. Because if you keep doing that, it's, it's, going, to, it's, going, to, it's going to get to a point where you think you have mastered it. This will allow you to be caught at this time of your life. Because there's a time of your life that if it gets to that, if that thing gets there, which you can destroy your life. The Lord allows you to be caught. It will catch you. So when they catch you, you'll be ashamed for a while. Like that, my friend, Brother James, who are going to buy Porn. And some of you were looking for that uh, Bambanga, what's the name of that guy? Banga Banga, that uh, Koduva guy. What's it, Koduva? Eh? Bashas. Bashas. Is it Bashas? Bashas. That guy that slept, uh, said he slept with 400 people. I mean, you were looking for that video. You have seen five, but you are not, you are not satisfied. You want to see everything. Your body is itching for it like this. Hmm? You have seen five already. What else do you want to see? You want more? You see, there's a vacuum in your life. It's a God-sized vacuum. Praise the Lord. Only God can fill it. You may try to fill it with lust. Try to fill it with sex. Try to fill it with all kinds of things. Like your eyes ask appetite. Your eyes. Your eyes ask appetite. Your eyes want to see. Your eyes is craving to see. So don't look for it. You, some of us even tried many places, we didn't see it. We are very hungry. Why is it not available everywhere? You are looking for the link. And the enemy is trying to lure you into it. You have, seen, you have seen some. You don't have to see everything. They already told you that that person, they already told, somebody told you what happened there. But somebody said, you want to see it for yourself. So you get stuck. If you have been delivered from porn here, and you go back and start watching that video, you are going to be stuck all over. That's true. You have been I've watched porn before. That's why I didn't look for the video. You see my point? I've, been, I've watched porn. I've been stuck to porn before. So anything that's, that's porn feeling. Para porn. <laughs> you want to look like. <laughs> he's losing his face to want to resemble porn. See, can't you see what they're doing? Bad, bad people. <laughs> see them. Hmm. Only God knows. Hmm. People are sinners. See them. See them. See them. Ah, wow. Hmm. Ah, wow. See them. 
Is this right? <laughs> we are looking at it. They already told you that the, the clothes that that girl wore in the picture, her breast is showing. You don't have to check for yourself. Are you getting my point? They already told you. You don't have to check for yourself. They said, don't worry. As she did, all her pants is showing. They have already told you. You don't have to see for yourself. All those notifications that come on your phone when a new picture, see what Bob Risky did in the bedroom. See what, see what this person was doing. See what this person did that made the internet to go haywire. See what, see the picture that turned everybody's head around. I don't want to see it. I want to see visions. I want to see, I don't want to see it. I want to see visions. I says the young men shall see visions. So instead of seeing visions, you are watching nudity. You can't see visions with eyes that watch nudity. I want to see visions. Sometimes sight can become a distraction. With focus, with blind, with focus comes blindness. So you look for it. But the Holy Spirit is telling you, don't do that. Don't look for that video. Some of us have seen one or two. You have tried. They say, but there's another one. But there's another one have come out. He says, you have to be careful. As you're doing that, you are grieving the Spirit of God. It's because it's telling you, you shouldn't be watching this. You know you shouldn't be watching this. There are some comedy that you shouldn't be watching. There are some comedy people. I love comedy a lot. Honestly, I'm, it's, I'm almost like I'm addicted to it. Because I love things that make me laugh. You know, but there are some comedians that all they do with their comedy is sexualize women. So if they don't have bum bum or breasts or something, they don't have comedy. And I don't watch them. I don't, I don't subscribe to them. If I see them, I swipe off because I don't want to even see. I don't want to even see what they want to say. I already know what they said in the last one. I don't want to see what this one. This one is not different. They are the same person. They are not, not born again. They are not born again. They have not changed. They have not repented. And if they die, they are going to hell. The Holy Spirit has a mind. But two, the Holy Spirit has a will. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. The Holy Spirit has a will. I'll stop in number four. That's number two. Number one can be, I said number one, he speaks. Number two, he can be grieved. Number three, he has a mind. Number four, he has a will. First Corinthians 12, verse 7 to 11. First Corinthians 12, verse 7 to 11. What does it say? First Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit is yes. given to every man to profit without. Yes. For to one is given by the Spirit... The, the, the word of wisdom. Yes. To another, the word of knowledge by yes. the same spirit. Yes. To another, faith by the same spirit. Yes. To another, the gift of healing by the same spirit. Same spirit, yes. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. Yes. To another, discerning of spirits. Yes. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Yes. To another, the interpretation the of 11. tongues. But all this work at that this one together, and one. the self same, spirit, self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as, as he will. will. So you see that the Holy Spirit has a will. And before this month is over, I'm going to teach you how to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. How to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. You see that lady who came out on Sunday, who every firstborn in their house was mad. Not two, not three, not four. Mad. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me right here. There's someone here. So the Spirit spoke. That's the gift of word of knowledge. The Spirit spoke. He has a will. He can look at us like this. I'm going to give this person this. I'm going to give that person this. I'm going to give that person this. And when he sees your desire, you want it. I was just to come to, 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 to convert those gifts. He says, I'm going to give it to you. When I was in the world, I was very greedy. When I gave my life to Christ, I converted my greed to the things of the Spirit. Give me everything that there is to be given. So in the petition of tongues, prophecy. I went to preach in Joss. It was powerful. In the petition of tongues, we just come in like this. Tongues. When last did you interpret someone's tongues? When last did you hear your own tongues in English? So these are gifts by the Spirit. You know, but we don't desire those things anymore. We want to get visa. We don't desire these old things anymore. What about if God gives you, by the word of knowledge, what the interviewer is going to ask you? By the word of knowledge. By the word of knowledge. And you're talking to someone, when you, when you go and preach the gospel, you talk to someone, and the person is being stubborn, and the Holy Ghost told that the person has a growth behind their neck. Just after their back, like, just by their back like this. And he says, the Holy Ghost just telling me that there's a growth. Like, I can never do that. Hey, what if it's a lie? But as you practice these gifts, you get better at it. 
You can't get better at things you don't practice. How are you going to get to that point where you can see, you know, and know by the Spirit if you don't practice it? He has a will. As we're in this church like this, the Holy Spirit has a will for everyone. He wants to give you something. He wants to give you. He's a giver. He wants to give you. He has a will to give. But we are not willing to receive. We are caught up. Busyness is the greatest distraction in our generation. We're so busy. So busy. Everything. There's always something to do. And, you know, because our phones now connect us to the entire world at the same time. So, the, the more connected you are, the more distracted you are. You can be everywhere. You can be talking to everybody. I can cast my mind back. You know, sometimes when I want to pray, and I say, but how did we used to pray in those days when there was no phone? How did we live our, how did we live our lives? Some of us might be too young. We don't know how you, did, you have never lived your life without a phone. But I lived my life without a phone. 2001, I entered, I entered OAU 2003. In 2003, I'm not even sure there was GSM like that, like that, like that. And now people even had phones. So how, how were we living? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 2002, 2003, I'm not sure there was a phone. But like my old number, I got me 2003. By the time I entered, you know, you, you can enter with matric number after like five years or six years before you finish. We didn't have phones. So when you sit in God's presence, it's just you and your Bible. One, two. We had more, we are more intentional about memorizing scriptures because we couldn't find it. Now, if I don't know scripture, I will Google it. I'll find scripture. In those days, I had to know all the scriptures. So on my Bible like this, there was no place, to, there was no internet to find scripture. Are you following my point? How many people could afford how much was one, one hour? One hour data, one hour internet in a Saba cafe, 115 naira. Then in those days, you go and do overnight browsing. Overnight browsing, your lap laptop will hang. All those things will happen. So I, I had to memorize the scriptures. Do you know what it means to be memorizing scriptures? Do you know what memorizing scriptures alone does to you? The, what the Holy Spirit can breathe upon the scriptures in your heart. We memorize an entire chapter. I know every scripture. I know every scripture. I know every scripture by head. Because I couldn't, I couldn't search for it. But the internet came. You know, as, as beautiful as this thing is, it has become the major distraction in our generation. Everybody has access to you. You have access to everybody. So we don't even have boundaries in our lives anymore. But the Holy Ghost wants to give you, He has a will. Last one, it can be stopped. Let me stop it. Number five, it can be stopped. First Thessalonians 5, verse 19. First Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians 5, verse 19. Help me pray, please. What does it say? First Thessalonians 5, 19. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit, it says. Yes. Uh -oh. yes. Yeah, so give me that in NLT. Give me that in Good News Translation. GNT. NLT. GNT. All right. What does NLT say? Do not stifle the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. What does Amplified say? Do not stifle. It's to choke the Holy Spirit. What does Amplified say? Amplified. If you have CEV, Contemporary English Version. It says... Do yes. not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. I like that. It says do not quench, then it says to subdue. So would you believe that as powerful as the Holy Spirit is, it can be subdued? That means I can subdue the Holy Spirit. I can. Go back to it. Go back. We're going to come back. Don't turn away God's Spirit. Let's go back to Amplified. I can subdue the Holy Spirit. I can pull him down. I can. Go back to Amplified. I can pull him down. I can, I can stifle him. I can choke life. I can become unresponsive to his walking, unresponsive to his walking and the guidance. I can stop him. I can limit the Holy Spirit. This week I want to do many things with me, but I, by my way of life, by being unresponsive to him, I can stifle him. I can stop him from walking. He wants to use my hands to heal the sick. I remember one of my friends who who was having terrible eating habits, couldn't eat. Everything she eats, you know, she's it's going to come out of her. She couldn't eat. Terrible. I don't know what medical condition that was. Couldn't eat. And she's called me. And I, I, the Holy Spirit just told me. I, I picked the phone. I wanted to call. As I called her, I said, in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are healed. And the, as I spoke that, the Holy Spirit says, no, son, I want to heal her now. So, she, had, she used to have a symptom somewhere in her body that shows that, I think it was something in her stomach that shows that symptom. So the Holy Spirit told me, he said, ask her to check it now, whether she can still feel it. I said, Holy Spirit, you know this thing. Let's just believe God. 
that with time, you know, let us let's just be believing God and believing God for healing and believing God. This is a continuous verse. Faith is not a continuous verse. Faith is a verb. I believe God. I believe, not I'm believing. <laughs> but he says, ask her to check now. So I just summoned up courage. The Holy Spirit told me that. I said, check it now. She screamed from the other end of the phone. I can't feel it anymore. I can't feel it anymore. It's not true. Check it well. I said it. I can't feel it anymore. Pastor is gone. And she was, I'm sweating right now. This woman that couldn't eat. And that was, that was what the doctor diagnosed. She called me by 1 a.m. In the midnight. Ah, I was happy. What happened? What happened? Can you believe I'm eating right now? I'm eating a bar. In the middle of the night. Pastor, I'm healed. I said, sweet Holy Spirit. See, how many times would you listen to me? Now, there are times I want to pray for the sick. I, in my subconscious, I'm not even believing for them to be healed instantly. I just want to pray out of routine. But the Holy Spirit wants to heal everyone. If I say, Holy Spirit, how do I pray for this person? He said, lay your hands here. Lay your hands here. You see how Jesus does it. Sometimes he will spit, put clay. Sometimes he will touch. Sometimes he will take the person away and speak. Sometimes he would ask the person to go behind and speak. Sometimes he would, you see him doing all those kind of things. Why is he healing people with similar conditions in different ways? Because he's listening to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what do I do now? What do I do now? How do, I, how do we address this? You sometimes see, Jairus' daughter was dead, went and healed her. Lazarus was going to die. He stayed back. Why did he stay back four days? Holy says, don't go yet. Wait. I have something bigger coming. If you only are sensitive, so you see the life of Jesus. Very, very sensitive to the Spirit. He came down from the mountain. Peter says, every man seek you. He said, no, we are going to Gadara. And he entered the boat and there was a storm. They almost died all the way to Gadara. And the madman at Gadara. Oh, God. That man had such many demons in him. The Bible says he was so, so violent that they had chained him many times. With his bare hands, he would break the chains. He would take stones from the tomb and cut himself in the middle of night and would be bleeding and be crying in the tombs in the night. He was so violent. That man needed help. No one could help him. And Jesus left all this multitude. All because he was going for that one man. When he got to the shore, oh sweet spirit of God, that man saw Jesus, ran to him. And brought all his demons with him. Fell at his face. And began to worship Jesus. And Jesus saw. Because the demons started crying out. Why do you want to cast us out before our time? Why do you want to cast us out? man had brought, bring your demons to Jesus. He says. Came with him and come to church. And come with that bloody devil with it. That woman who had bent back. Came to church every day. And brought that hunch back with it. You know what? Jesus was going to heal him. Heal her. So I spoke to demons, and demons says, Please don't cast her out, cast us into the swine. 200 pigs, 200 pigs drowned on what one man was carrying. 200 pigs couldn't handle it, they drowned. The man, Bible says, was sitting down now with Jesus. Look at what Jesus did. Kai Mekaradabakashaya sat there with him. The man was now healed. And people in the village came and they didn't want Jesus Christ around. They said, please leave. We don't want you here. They were not even excited for this man. So what were they chaining him so long as it was not a nuisance to them? They didn't love him. Are you following my point? They were supposed to be very happy for him. That man, you are healed. My man. They just wanted Jesus Christ away. Jesus Christ, the man wanted to follow Jesus. He said, Jesus, please let me follow you. Jesus Christ, no, don't follow me. Just, just go around telling people what the Lord has done for you. And the man began to minister and tell, Bible says he went to 10 cities telling people what Jesus Christ had done for him. Jesus Christ never went to Gadara ever again till he died. He left all that crowd just for one man. You know, even tonight, he could leave a million people just for one person. And he might be in this room tonight just because of you. Rise on your feet. It's like that. He loves you like that. He loves you like that. Can you just begin to worship him? Just begin to worship him.
just begin to worship him just begin to worship him say lord i worship you let my worship be a sweet smelling savour before you tonight lord i worship you